Great. Hola a todos. Today I'm going to explain the difference between fue, era, estuvo, and estaba. These, uh, these verbs can be translated as the same in, in, in English, but in Spanish they have different uses and they have a different sense or it explains situations it's slightly different. Uh, according to the context. So this is when we are going to explain it. But the best way to actually understand, to really, really understand the differences is by practicing a lot. And the best way to practice is by listening and reading. Those are the best tools that you can use to really understand this time tense, these differences, and whatever time tense or whatever uh, thing that is difficult for you to understand. Remember that this is just a guide and I tried to simplify as much as I could the meanings so you could uh, understand it better and be able to use it. Please practice as much as you can. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. So let's start with the um, with the conjugations of that. Before I start and before I forget, I will leave you in the link. Uh, a video where I explain the differences between ser and estar. I'm not going to explain that today in this video. Today I'm just going to explain the differences between ser en pasado simple, en pasado imperfecto, and estar en pasado simple, en pasado imperfecto. So I, if you are not still clear about the actual difference between ser and estar, please watch the video that I'm going to link below. Good. Let's start with the conjugations in case you don't know, or just to review. Pasado simple, yo fui, tú fuiste, él, ella, usted fue, nosotros, nosotras fuimos, ellos, ellas, ustedes fueron. Pasado imperfecto es yo era, tú eras, él, ella, usted era, nosotros, nosotras éramos, ellos, ellas, ustedes eran. Vamos con estar, pasado simple, yo estuve, tú estuviste, él, ella, usted estuvo, nosotros, nosotras estuvimos, ellos, ellas, ustedes estuvieron. En pasado imperfecto, yo estaba, tú estabas, él, ella, usted estaba, nosotros, nosotras estábamos, ellos, ellas, ustedes estaban. Now the first example. So let's talk about Lady Di here. Ella es Diana. Eh, ella era Diana, sorry. Era del Reino Unido. Ella era una princesa. Era muy amable y bonita. Ella estaba en Francia cuando murió. Now, second sentence uh, is very similar. Ella era Diana. Era del Reino Unido. Ella fue una princesa. Ella era muy bonita. Y siempre fue muy amable con todos sus empleados. Ella estuvo en ese restaurante en Francia antes de morir. So, let's see the differences. First sentence says, she was Diane. She was from the United Kingdom. She was a princess. She was very nice and pretty. She was in France when she died. So here I'm using just imperfecto because I'm describing her. I'm describing how she was in the past, obviously, how she was before she died. Ella era Diana. She was Diana her whole life. She was from the United Kingdom. Again, she was born in the United Kingdom, and she will always be from the United Kingdom. Um, it's like when someone is born in a place, it always is from that place, even if the passport says differently. So. This is the way we use era here. Ella era una princesa. Okay, we're talking about her profession. This is the idea that we have of her. So we use era in this case. Era muy amable y bonita. I'm talking about her personality. So as long as people knew her, they consider her as a very nice person and they think or they thought that she was very pretty. And she was in France when she died. Uh, in case you don't know, she's a prince. She, she used to be the prince of England. She married Prince Charles. And she was in France 
and that moment she was in France when she died. She died in a car crash in 1997. And while she was in France in that time frame, when she was in France, in France, unfortunately, she died. Now, the second sentence: Ella era de Diana. Here we cannot change it to fue because she was Diana her whole life. All right. Era del Reino Unido. So she was from the United Kingdom. Again, her whole life she was from the United Kingdom. Ella fue una princesa. Here we could use ella era una princesa o ella fue una princesa. We can use both here because you depend on depends on what the person wants to say. And when you are talking, you don't need to think about much what you're trying to say or not. But it's just in case you are curious of why we use one and not the other, is that um, you can see it this way, the simplest thing. When we talk about profession, like as a princess, it's like a profession, you can use one or the other, right? Let's just keep it as simple as possible. Ella era muy bonita, okay? She was very pretty, I'm talking about her appearance. So she was very pretty from the moment she was born or from the moment people knew her, she became famous, right? Like the memory that we have of her, that she was very pretty. So that's how we view her, her whole life or her public life, let's say. We could say, would it be possible to say ella fue muy bonita? Yes, but the meaning is different. That's why I didn't use it here. If you say ella fue muy bonita, it, wouldn't, it, don't, it doesn't apply here because Diane is unfortunately dead she passed away she what let's let's live in a hypothetical universe where she's alive uh i don't know how old she was very young when she died i, I don't remember how old she would be uh, that was like uh, 30 years ago she died like almost 30 years ago i think i remember i was a kid when i saw them uh, that wasn't that well that was in 97 so it was like 20 something years ago i want to believe almost 20 years ago, something like that, but with numbers. The point is that she would have uh, she would have it older, right? And the case she was alive and she wouldn't look as pretty right now, we could say, oh, ella fue muy bonita cuando era joven. She was very pretty when she was young. You know, kind of implying that now she's not. So we could use it, we could use fue in that context. Now in, the con in this context right now, we say, yes, ella era muy bonita because in our minds, she was pretty all her life. Now, eh, y siempre fue muy amable con sus empleados. Now here, instead of era, I use fue because I'm talking about a specific situation, a situation where she was the boss and she had employees. And as long as she had employees, she was nice. So in here, I'm not implying that her personality was to be nice. I'm just implying that she was nice with her employees. Maybe she was a horrible person with the rest of people in her life, right? That wasn't the case, but let's imagine it was. It could be, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean that, but it doesn't really mean that her personality was to be nice. When we say, era muy amable, we are saying that, okay, she was a very kind person, a very nice person. When we say, fue muy amable con todos sus empleados, we are just, we just want to say or want to highlight the fact that she was very nice with her employees. Right? Ella estuvo en ese restaurante en Francia antes de morir. So she was, let's say you are in Paris where she died, and you look at the restaurant, you point at the restaurant and say, hey, Ella, Diana, was in that restaurant right there in France before she died. Now, when you say ella estuvo en restaurante before she died, you are implying that at some point, that let, let's imagine that she was in France a week for a week before she died, okay? She, she was staying in France a week before she died. She arrived a week before she died. And at some point of her staying in France, she went to a specific restaurant, right? So since a specific moment in time, a specific event, we say estuvo. Now, if we mention ella estaba en ese restaurante instead of estuvo, a Spanish speaker would say 
So, ella estaba en ese restaurante. That means that she died in the restaurant. And that's not the case. She didn't die in a restaurant. She died in a car crash. So, you see the difference here? You see where I'm going with this? I hope, I hope you do. Uh, we're going to continue seeing more, more examples. Oh, for example, here, Maracaibo. Maracaibo is a city in Venezuela. It's my city in Venezuela, where I come from. Maracaibo era una ciudad tranquila y muy alegre en los años 50. Maracaibo fue una ciudad tranquila y muy alegre en los años 50. Now, here, in this sentences, the, there's no difference. Really, there's no difference uh, in context. Really, you can use one or the other without really changing the meaning or the intention of the sentence. So you're just saying that Maracaibo was a very calm and happy city in the 50s. The only slight difference that you can find is that if you say, bueno, Maracaibo era una ciudad tranquila y muy alegre en los años 50, you are more, eh, it's more probable that you use era in a, in a situation where you're talking about Maracaibo now and you are comparing with how it was before, all right? And maybe that is not the same right now. You know, compared to well, what Maracaibo era, a very quiet, calm city, now it's not. Uh, so there's a little implication there, which is very subtle. That's why I said like most of the cases, 99.99 .99 of the cases, you can use one or the other in a sentence like this. Now, Maracaibo fue una ciudad tranquila y muy alegre. That seems external, not really compared with the present. Just same uh, fact about the past of the city, okay? But like I said, it's not really important in a conversation to use one or the other. Native speakers will understand. It's just for you to maybe understand if you listen one or the other, try to understand the context of where that sentence comes from, but not really important when you use it. Now, here, los conciertos de Queen eran impresionantes versus el concierto de Queen and Life Aid fue impresionante. So here I'm talking about kind of a habit or a repeated event. Concerts in general, Queen were very impressive, right? Uh, it was a very huge band, great music, some of the best music of all times. So obviously the concerts were amazing. They have Freddie Mercury, they could not be amazing. And then when I use fue, I'm using, I'm talking about this specific concert, which is the picture that you see here. Maybe some of you remember this, uh, have seen this concert, El Concierto de Queen and Live Aid. Live Aid was a festival that was created to help people in Africa. Was impressive. So I'm talking about this specific concert about of Queen. All right, I'm not talking about here when I use imperfecto. I'm talking about in general how their concerts concerts were, and here I'm talking about this specific concert. Now, ayer era un di un buen día para ir a la playa. Uh, sus posts say playa. Ya, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Ayer, eh, oh, actually, it's a buen día. I don't know what happened here. I'm sorry. Uh, it's supposed to say, ayer era un buen día para ir a la playa. There you go. They're supposed to say, ayer era un buen día para ir a la playa. Same here. Ayer fue un buen día para ir a la playa. So, here the intention is, a bit different. When you say ella ayer era un buen día para ir a la playa, if the, if the speaker, oh no, not the speaker, the listener, the listener doesn't have a context, you don't really know, or the listener wouldn't really know if the person went to the beach or not. Okay? If the person went to the beach or not. Uh, I mean, no. Um, 
So you need more information. So you can say, ayer era un buen día para ir a playa, pero no tenía tiempo. Yesterday was a good day to go to the beach, but I didn't have the time. Or, ayer era un buen día para ir a la playa, así que decidimos ir por un par de horas. So, yesterday was a good day to go to the beach, but uh, so uh, we decided to go for a couple hours. Okay, so here you need more information. Now, when you use fue, you don't need any more information. You already know that the person went to the beach. Ayer fue un buen día para ir a la playa. Yesterday was a good day to go to the beach because it was sunny and we had a great time. You know, there, were, there weren't many people on the beach. Uh, the water was calm and, and a nice temperature. So, ayer fue un buen día. Yesterday was a good day. So, yo, just by say fue, we already know that the person went to the beach. Okay? Now, with era, as I said before, you need more information to actually know if the, if the person went or not. Okay? And now with the star. Now we just practice. We uh, did several examples with said. Now with the star. El restaurante de mi padre estaba en esta esquina. Or, el restaurante de mi padre estuvo en esta esquina por 10 años. So, in the first one, I, I'm not given any time or time frame. So, I use estaba. Um, I, I use estaba here. The, my father's restaurant was in this corner. Okay, obviously it's not anymore. That's the only thing that we know. But we don't know anything else. Now here, since we're being more specific, we use estuvo. El restaurante de mi padre estuvo en esta esquina por 10 años. So my father's restaurant was in this corner for 10 years. We have a time frame and we have not a specific ending, but we know the ending, all right? Of course, we're talking in the past. So everything everything finished, everything ended, everything's in the past. But with estaba, it's like there is no beginning of end or end. And with estuvo, we know there is a time frame, which is 10, 10 años. And the first sentence, we could say, el restaurante de mi padre estuvo en esta esquina. It's possible. You can use it. Because we're talking in the past, and uh, we don't need a time frame, right, to use estuvo. But we cannot use a time frame with estaba, all right, in this kind of uh, sentences, right? Now, with feelings. Él estaba triste porque no quería viajar en tren, o él estuvo triste todo el viaje. Okay, so when I say, él estaba triste, we need more information. We cannot just say, él estaba triste. When we use estaba, it's because you are, or oh, the listener is expecting you to give more information because there is not previous information before. All right? So we say, él estaba triste because he wanted, he didn't want to travel by train. Él estuvo triste todo el viaje, it's like, Okay, then you can ask why, but it's not necessary. Like when I, someone said, él estuvo triste todo el viaje. That's it, All right? No need for context. With estaba, we need some context. The context can be before or after, but we need the context. Now here, ellos estaban caminando por el parque. Ellos estaban caminando por el parque cuando vieron a un gato herido. Ellos estuvieron caminando por el parque o ellos estuvieron caminando por el parque por 30 minutos. Okay, the first, the first two with imperfecto. They were, they were walking on the park. Uh, they were walking by the park or on the park. They were, walk, they were walking by the park when they saw a wounded cat. So here, in the first one, I'm just saying, ellos estaban caminando, they were walking in the park. Uh, so, ellos estuvieron caminando por el parque. We can use them, like, again, 99.99% of the time. Interchangeably, 
there are some occasions, a few occasions where you we use estuvieron as a tapa for sure, but those are very specific that you will have to face them and understand them, right? Uh, but most of the time, just for you to know, you can use both. And ellos estaban caminando, they were walking. I mean, something was happening. The situation was ongoing. They were walking. When something happened, they interrupted them. So they were walking when uh, by the park when they saw the wooden cat, so they stopped walking. All right, they stopped walking to help the cat. All right? And ellos, we wouldn't use estuvieron in this case because the verb uh, imperfecto uh, wants to um, has the sense of something that is happening in a moment in the past, okay? While estuvieron, pasado simple, something that happened, just happened. Estaba is like oh, going, yeah. So that's why here I wouldn't use the same sentence. And I use, like I, I used before, a time frame. They were walking in the park for 30 minutes. Again, we could say ellos estuvieron caminando en el parque por 30 minutos, but not ellos estaban caminando por el parque por 30 minutos. That doesn't work with the imperfect. Okay, that's all for today. I hope it was useful. I hope uh, you understand better this difference that I know it's very difficult for your students. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe for more. Adios.